Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with me your host Agassino Zynga and this is episode number 432 that's 432 of the Agassino Zynga show 432 how you doing my friends my family my people great good to hear if it's your first time check out the show via youtube you know what to do make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe and of course leave me a comment down below with any thoughts and opinions you have regarding the show that'd be more than welcomed support via patreon is also welcome that patreon.com for just agostino to get bonus content only available for my patreon subscribers and you can subscribe on there for as little as one pound that's one dollar per month you can subscribe on there for bonus no holds barred content only directly if you patreon at patreon.com for slash agostino that's patreon.com for slash a g o s t i n h o you can find the link in the show descriptions in the podcasting description and anywhere else i post videos you should be able to find that too so how's it going how's tricks how's the situation hope you're good wherever you may be i am doing um as well as in, as well as hoped i think yeah, as well as hoped. let's say as well as hoped, no words imagine as well as hoped all things considered um i'm not sure about you but i don't think i've ever felt more ugly in my entire life than now both inside and out right i feel like <laughs> i don't know if everyone else is feeling the same thing but i feel like i've been so devoid of any sort of experiences in life that in the last 18 months as soon as much as everybody else that's kind of enriched me right i'm devoid of enrich enriching life experiences that i can actually um say oh yeah i did that x y and z i went to this place i saw this person i saw that thing i was at that place at that time moment in time i've been robbed of those moments so i feel rich so i feel ugly and in the inside and also feel obviously naturally ugly on the outside it's might, legitly might be the fattest i've ever been it legitly might be the worst i've looked in terms of facially in terms of body composition <laughs> just all of it it's just horrendous um it's going to take a few months to get this sort of funk off of me you know it's similar it kind of feels like you know when you're on a plane for long like especially if you go on a plane for any t any more than three hours right you have that kind of weird air plain funk smell maybe it's from the recycled air that you are kind of subjected to which is probably going to be helped now with masks remember back in the day this is so weird how it is right do you remember ages ago when we used to go to the airport and you used to look at people from the far east wearing face masks and you to think well i wonder what he or she has right you used to be worried about them it was such a weird thing they look like freaks to you now look what's happened right um roll on two years three years five years the wearing of a face mask in, a, in an airport is going to be very common i'm assuming most um ocd mums are definitely going to make sure the whole family has three or four face masks on when they're going on a plane it's going to be a common thing um especially because i predict there's going to be one tragic scaremongering story that the press is going to run with when things reopen up again um, i assume there's going to be some unlucky family is going to contract the virus on the plane it's going to be the first recorded incidents first since the cases have come down and all this sort of hyperbole and everyone's going to be back on it but i predict that's going to be like a standard thing going forward there's going to be people that have legitimately got it's like you remember when it was weird when you go to the airport and they ask you to take your shoes off it, that was like post 9 11 right they, they take your shoes off and i think it was post that guy that tried to get on a plane and blow up the plane with his, with a shoe bomb i think it was a british dude tried to go somewhere in america and then it changed the way we sort of um what we accepted in the airport we accepted that full body scan thing we accepted them um you know picking out random passengers who happen to be non-white um for an extra thorough cav um, you know rectum and cavity search in the non-disclosed room around the corner those are big those are normal things i also predict now when the world reopens the normal thing will be just to kind of wear a face mask because you're on a plane and so this is what it sort of feels like it feels like i've been on a plane this feels like the last time i went to like bali or i went to mexico or whatever right those plane rides are usually 10 plus hours and there's you know you're constantly getting fed the um the airline food right i think it's every four hours or whatever it is they give you you're sat in these really cramped seats especially if you're sat in coach like i was um regardless you're sitting in, in the window or the middle seat or the aisle seat it's always uncomfortable you're being fed this horrendous microwavable meals you can't really stretch your legs too tough um and you just you just feel that yucky and then usually those kind of flights the first thing you want to do even though you're 
maybe gagging for a beer or whatever the first thing you're gonna do is get to your airbnb get to your hotel just have a shower and just get that funk off of you a little bit freshen up or somewhat and this is what it sort of feels like so um i feel so ugly i feel legitimately the ugliest i've ever been like my hair is out of control you know the beard's out of control everything's puffy and just yeah it just feels horrendous um i'm gonna need a lot of work to get back to a base level of um cuteness when things reopen but you know I, i'm sure we will be cute i've definitely got high hopes for stuff reopening up again um don't believe the media scaremonger especially in the uk the rates of vaccinations have been going on pretty well uh people have been getting vaccinated at record numbers we're looking like we're going to hit the target in terms of getting 50 percent of people done maybe by the end of february so the numbers are looking really good um if we continue in the course we're on now we're most likely going to get everyone that's at risk out of the way possibly by the end of june optimistic that that's like a stretch goal but we can kind of bring that no that so that's like a um, conservative goal but we can bring that obviously a lot more forward if we decide to just if the government has decided hey Say five percent of the population has been vaccinated anyway. Let's just open up to everybody and just go and get it if you want to go get it. That would be the great way to go do things so we can get back to some sort of semblance of normal life. But man, again, I'm not taking barber shots for granted. I'm not taking the ability to go to Primark for granted anymore. I wonder if stuff reopens to get underwear and all that stuff. Um, because you know, if ever if ever there was a time where I needed a a fresh cleanse like and the thing is as well i've bought so many new pairs of trainers and clothes during this lockdown i've got quite a few bits and pieces i've purchased and i've not been bothered to wear any of it during this time because i just don't feel like getting dressed up and looking cute just so i can what do nothing but the moment a pub or a bar opens i'm gonna wear that outfit straight away i just need to kind of feel some semblance of um normality which is going to be weird because again we do we haven't had weekends in a while right weekends haven't existed for a long time so it's going to be strange to get back into that sort of mode but i'm sure once places reopen you know that'll kind of slip back into the normal scheduled um you know programming when that sort of happens but yeah man if you're feeling ugly like i am at this moment uh make sure you smash one in the comments down below <laughs> if you feel cute smash two i'm sure there's some people that still feel cute regardless there's usually a lot of the girls are still feeling cute in it i'm seeing so many girls posting photo shoots of them indoors i don't know how they do it I, I don't think there's any time in my life that I'll be that bored enough to be able, I don't know, but again, maybe girls, some girls just not enjoy doing it, but you see those girls putting on full faces of makeup, looking amazing, putting on a really cute outfit and doing like a photo shoot thing at home with their camera and do all different poses. I can't, I, I don't know, I could never do it. I just don't have the patience to put those clothes on and what look cute for Instagram likes that's like the worst uh, that's like the worst reality i could ever kind of imagine for myself anyway personally for myself only speaking but hey everyone's different everyone's different so we've got a jam-packed show for you today loads of stuff to get through loads and loads and loads of stuff that i kind of haven't spoken on this during this week i guess that i've kind of wanted to you know expound upon the podcast as per usual so again make sure it's your first time check out the show via youtube make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe that'll be more than in more than work well that'll be i would really appreciate if you did so um of course you can follow me on instagram follow me on twitter as well that'd be more than gracious too and if you're listening via the podcast app of course make sure you subscribe make sure you download make sure you share all that good stuff people can find it and support via patreon as well so welcome to at patreon.com for just agostino that's patreon.com for just a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o subscribe on patreon get involved help out the kid that will be greatly appreciated <coughs> so first bit of news to get into i'm not into the scaremonger at the moment i'm really not enjoying it the press are doing this annoying thing where they're constantly putting out these uh clickbaity headlines such as this one from sky news it says covid19 restrictions could be in place until adults are vaccinated experts warn and it's just all these that could be you know loads of these sort of words that are being used right could be and they're not really doing anything um in terms of um giving the country any sort of semblance of respite hope something to look forward to for the future nothing whatsoever if anything it's just kind of adding more confusion to the situation which i guess you can kind of understand because there's been no official words so far at the moment from number 10 down industry as to when lockdown can get eased they're being quite coy which is fair enough considering the amount of blunders that they've made you know throughout this entire process right uh, leaking stuff to the press not leaking stuff to the because it's funny now we're in this period where they're vaccinating everybody and trying to get numbers low there's not really been any mm, 
leaks of any any kind of substance right there's been the odd leak here and there but no real substantial leaks have kind of come out since so they obviously want to change their tactics and their approach um but that's okay because so far what we know is that boris is going to give a speech on the 22nd with um the first instance of actual dates as to when we can expect to have life go back to normal with some key milestones in place and blah blah blah, blah which will give people an understanding of where they sort of sit but these sort of headlines do nothing because the actual article itself are just you know hypothetical um claims put out there by people who are not really directly associated with some of the decision making processes that have to do with covid in the uk so again i'm just not a fan of these sort of headlines but let's read the article <clears throat> It says the following it says um coronavirus restrictions could last until um could last until all adults have been vaccinated a senior public health england official has warned dr susan hopkins um told sky news measures may have to come into place uh beyond that until more is known about covid19 transmission before we can release everything and get back to life as it was speaking to a special program covid crisis uh, learned the lesson she admitted it was difficult to say if rules um this summer could be tighter than they were during the same period in 2020 so that's the problem if you're in if you're in a government you can't really listen to scientists right when you're making poly public health choices choices for public health or just in terms of the economy you just can't listen to them because if it was up to those guys they would legitimately tell you that you can't go outdoors until everybody's vaccinated right it's similar to when i don't know you sprain your ankle or you fracture an arm and you go to the doctors and they tell you you have to be in a car and you know for the prescribed 12 weeks 18 weeks whatever as much it is but because you're an athlete and you earn your money by using your body you kind of skip or maybe cut that recovery process short and um you get you get through it right obviously the doctor wouldn't advise it they'd want you to go through the entire thing then go through rehab and then go through an extensive um maybe course of medication whatever it may be but sometimes in real life your actual day-to-day -day, you're going to have to make some real life decisions to allow you to kind of get back to some level of semblance of normality knowing that maybe the scientific or scientific or medical um way of going about things is probably right but also detrimental to your long-term prospects that's the balance they're gonna have to put if you're a politician you have to weigh up both sides and i'm more obviously uh earing on the side of just getting people out and about because <clears throat> the amount of people we've lost during this time um being locked down for this extended period of time even prior to this as well it's very imagine the uk is really unique in that we would not really had great leadership throughout covid for the entire time it's been pretty hap you know haphazard um we were basically led to believe we were basically told without being told that we were trying to achieve herd immunity by the time that was obviously proved to be ineffective it was too late by that time you know the government got egg on their faces and didn't want to be shown to be u-turning and all this flip-flopping so they delayed decisions they fumbled stuff and they just took time to make decisions um you know the whole christmas holiday thing was absolute diabolical catastrophe so we've not really been given any sort of reassurance that if we just leave it to these guys that they're going to make the right decision so if anything the last thing we want to do is let them listen to scientists who are going to tell them hey keep everybody indoors until everyone's vaccinated which is just not sensible it continues one of the things we've learned is that when people go on holiday perhaps they drop their guard a bit perhaps they might get a bit closer and they mingle in groups well duh you're on holiday um that could be one of the areas in which the spread infection can occur so i think it'll be it, it'll we are going to have to have some measures in place until the whole population is vaccinated at least all the adult population i'm just not having that i'm sorry i refuse man when's uh, I, <coughs> part of me anyway thinks when the world reopens anyway it's going to be pretty impossible for the government to have any sort of formal restrictions and hold people back from going out i guess maybe not going to certain places because businesses is going to be usually um it's going to they're going to be uh, beholden to what the government say but in terms of going out and about and moving around the city or moving around the country people are just not going to have it they're not going to have the government telling them exactly what they can or cannot do especially when the once the weather's you know gets a bit nicer and shit we don't really have great summers in the we don't really have great weather year round in the uk so when the summer comes around and you get a bit of sun there's nothing you can do to stop people going out and enjoying it so that is not really on the cards and it says that even if i think we'll need to know more about transition before we can release everything and get back to how it was <sighs> 
it like you know this is a scene from last year the obviously people were like sunbathing on a beach wherever they can around New England so it's going to be very difficult on the on is to get people to listen to this sort of stuff and I just don't think it's sensible given the numbers given what we know so far about transmission given what we know about how to avoid getting it and um, given all the other medications I think I read a paper earlier about how beneficial asthma pumps are over the table in terms of treating um you know symptoms of covid there are so many things that we can do between now and you know summertime that can alleviate some of the pressure on a national health service and just get people to an, a level where they can you know move around as need be i think that's probably the best way to go about things and then i was thinking also just in general it would have been far better i would have really really enjoyed if there was an option if we had more I don't know if we had a, you know, they have similar to Switzerland where they have like principality rules where like, cert, like I don't know, maybe Manchester, Birmingham or whatever, they basically were ruled by their mayors kind of. They made like sort of like, may, yeah, they made like state sort of or citywide jurisdiction. They were, they, they precise, yes, yeah, citywide jurisdictions. Is that what I mean? Yeah. So basically the mayor of Manchester could permit um his city to be reopened to a certain level um i wish we had more of that just so we can have like a different idea as to what sort of approaches work because there's no again as good as this mass lockdown has been i'm not sure how beneficial it's been for the economy overall especially places that have been you know completely depleted of their resources and ability to earn any money during this time it would have been nice to maybe have a bit of an experiment where different areas across the uk had different approaches how to deal with covid that would have been pretty great but again here we are I still think there's light in the tunnel. I don't really accept all these sort of scaremongering tactics that the press are ramping up. And I think by at least at least the beginning of April, you start to see people moving around and doing things. Like I think even maybe sooner. Um, talking about moving and going about doing stuff, we got this article here from the Guardian. It says, Too soon to book college in the UK abroad, says Grant Shapps. It says, Travel industry appears to be contradict the, tra the transport sector suggestions that bookings can still be made. So this is a bit weird, right? Because I think there's two articles here. I think there's there's an article here with Grant Shapps obviously saying it's too early to book and another one by Matt Hancock who basically says, you know, it's all up in the air still. So my thinking from this is that most likely what will end up happening once Boris announced the roadmap for COVID, um, easing of lockdowns from the 20, February 22nd, I think, right? That's when the press conference is taking place where he's meant to announce the actual dates of when things can go back to some semblance of normality. Once that happens, I think a lot of people will, will make their decisions about where they're going to book based off of that. I just received the other day an email from Ryanair because um, of a flight I was meant to take. We were meant to go to Berlin for May Day on... Yeah, I think last year, yeah, basically last year, that was meant to be like our first boys trip to go Berlin and just basically check out May Day, um, which is meant to be one of the best times to be around the city. Um, obviously, loads of street parties, loads of open air stuff, markets, blah, 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 go to all the clubs, you know how the deal is. And obviously that got cancelled due to COVID. And um, Ryan, they basically offered the ability to either refund it, cash amount, or to refund it as credits on your account. I just put the credits on my account. And that was due to expire in April. And then I got a random email today saying, oh, hey, great news. We've extended your your credit balance until the end, the, like December 2021. And I know I was thinking it's a great obviously to hear that from from Ryanair because, you know, you don't get a lot of things for quote unquote free or like reminders like that from these companies. But I think it wasn't done out of the goodness of their heart. I think they were obviously doing that because number one they're probably hurting for bookings people are not really booking flights i'd imagine now um you know the uncertainty in terms of covid and just you know the restrictions in place already at the moment um the travel corridors all this sort of stuff so it's just too risky to book anything even if you are an influencer it just it just requires too much maybe work and to get that done but i also think they probably are firmly aware that most likely what will end up happening certain countries especially the ones that have been able to get a hold of some stock of the vaccine um i heard germany's gonna maybe um ease this lockdown very soon maybe the end of february too so there's different places in around europe that are going to reassess where they're at um which is then obviously given ryanair hope that if they remind people that hey you've got these credits they're probably going to be able to book they're probably going to use use that credit against a booking that they're going to want to do 
too because that's what I'm going to do right if I've got like you know 50 pounds or something of credits with Ryanair I'll just use that against a flight even if it's 100 pounds or just put the 50 pound on top of it but still you've got the benefit of having that voucher there so there's a lot of stuff on the cards still for stuff to open up so don't take all this stuff take all this stuff I think with a pinch of salt that's what I would say regarding the take all the pinch of salt let's read a couple of the paragraphs here so it says here the transport secretary has told people in Britain um, not to book holidays domestically or abroad uh, provoking an immediate backlash in the UK's impact on the travel industry it says a quote uh, people shouldn't be booking holidays right now not domestically or internationally Grant Shapps told BBC Radio 4's Today programme it was too soon however the travel industry on Wednesday appeared to contradict Shapps saying that the sun package holiday customers could rely on refunds if the foreign office banned on essential traveling holiday destinations a spokesman for the Association of British Travel Agents said you can book a summer holiday now with confidence by booking a package holiday holiday for a ABTA member and many travel companies are also offering a f uh, additional flexibility to take into account the uncertainty created by the pandemic okay that's pretty cool domestic and international travel companies have pinned their hopes on the recovery on the recovery on a return to something like normal service over the summer as the vaccination program allows people within the UK to emerge from national lockdowns holidays are banned under lockdown rules in England so I guess some countries are not permitting us to arrive but most countries are but you're not allowed to leave the UK. So that's that's where I think they're quite right there. As long as people have been vaccinated, the numbers are down, and we get a roadmap, there is probably a possibility for people to start flying regularly in and around Europe, maybe from the end of February, beginning of March. Um, Shaps told um, Boris Johnson, uh, Boris Shaps, Shaps said Boris Johnson would lay out on February 22nd how the UK plans to lift the lockdown restrictions, but said it was not clear that holidays would be included in those plans because of uncertainty over development of vaccinations with pressures of the health service. Yes, so true. I still think we'll get a, an idea of where we're going from February 22nd, but I think most likely what happened is that we'll probably get more of a a rough estimate of like what certain sectors will reopen like restaurants bars salons all those amenities and shops and shit and then then we'll probably progress upwards from there on maybe you know venues uh big stadium uh group sports and all that sort of stuff um but yeah optimistic news on the horizons just keep just i guess try and keep your uh digestion of this news to a minim minimal minimalist minimum as you can Minimum as you can, whatever that word is, um, because a lot of this stuff is just done to, you know, to scare you into submission, which of course isn't our way to go about things. Um, what else we have here? Oh, we have um, Hiroshi Fujiwara shared a pretty cool um, Apple designed uh, face mask, which I've not really seen to begin with, right? But I thought it looked pretty interesting. I think I heard someone mention it in another podcast before that this was actually on the works, but um, this is a full video of it. We've got a video here from Unbox Therapy, but Am I the only person that's kind of gone off Unbox Therapy the last few years? I'm not really a fan of his content. I'm subscribed from his channel. I don't really check from him anymore. He kind of annoys me. I'm not just sure if it's just because of that whole case thing, the whole like um, uh, carbon fiber phone case debacle that he went on and how he acted with that. It just kind of rubbed me up the wrong way. Even if you know, looking at the facts, he wasn't completely in the wrong. It was probably maybe blown out of proportion. Still, the way he kind of conducted himself kind of rubbed me up the wrong way. And just generally, I kind of hate his... I'm not a fan of his kind of smarmy, condescending, know-it-all sort of like tone. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Am I the only person? I'm, I'm not really watching Unbox Therapy in time, so I'm not going to click that. But this is courtesy of Hypebeast. It says, Hiroshi Fujiwara, the godfather of streetwear, as you know, one of my idols in the scene, shares a look at the Apple design face mask. Um... It says here, uh, uh, talking to Instagram Godfather highlighted the minimal packaging, the design of the reusable face developed um, and engineered by industrial designers behind the iPhone and iPad. So that's pretty cool that, you know, Apple decided to make their own face masks, which makes sense. You know, if you've got staff on the shop floor, the last thing you want is for them to have like, you know, an underarm and mask on or some other nondescript one. You want them to wear something that kind of goes in line with what your kind of, you know, design sensibilities are, fits in with a uniform. Um, it's different sizes this too it got here smaller than large smaller than medium i'm assuming it's gonna be a large in excel blah 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 reusable face mask and yeah it's a pretty sleek design similar to um a lot of the masks you see people in asia wearing where solo sort of got like this kind of flap on the inner side that sort of adjusts a little bit um and then it's got some looks like drawstrings on the outside that hoop loop over your ears classic apple packaging on there on the other side 
and it's re is it washable as well, I'm assuming, right? But I think we've got more pictures here via Mac Rumors. Um, Apple design team has created a new kind of protective mask that's being distributed to retail and corporate employees, but you can't purchase it. That's the only annoying part of it. So far, I've not seen any ability to purchase it. Um, the new Apple face mask, as you on the screen, is light, comfortable, and effective at keeping you and others safe. Um, the mask is called the Apple face mask and it was designed and developed in house by the Cupertino Engineering and Design Department. The Apple face mask features a free layer design that filters both incoming and outgoing particles like many cloth masks and it can be washed and reused up to five times. That's pretty cool. The mask has been designed as a triangle shape to accommodate the nose um, without fogging glasses and rounded section of the chin and adjustable strings on the ear. Okay, it's adjustable. Um, it goes over your nose perfectly in a triangle shape, avoids the fogging on your eyeballs and of course goes under your chin, which is great too. You still have to probably make sure you shave, I'm assuming, to get it really snug under your chin. It says here, article is updated. The original article referenced the second mask, the clear mask, but it turns out the second mask was not turned by Apple. Apple is already distributing the clear mask. Okay, cool. So the clear mask you can. Apple is, however, distributing the clear mask from its retail employees because it shows the entire face. Yeah, I've, I think I mentioned that before, that one. And Mac Rumors have received additional photos of the mask. So yeah, look how great that looks, man. Great packaging. That's what usually you expect from Apple. You see here the inside of the mask itself with the little flaps that go, I guess one that goes on top, one goes underneath your chin. The top one probably is that one there with a kind of little bit of a metally fabric on the inside that probably you can bend over your nose bridge. Yep, as you can see there, it looks pretty decent. Adjustable uh, straps as well on the side that you can pull with the little pull tabs there, it looks pretty cool. Um, got more images here from a user called Mark German. He says here's at your Apple face mask on box because unsurprisingly like any other product. Um, nice packaging inside the box. Little logos here on the other side to wash it. Note due to political social nature, the discussion regarding the discussion for is located in the political okay, it doesn't matter. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. I wonder if they're gonna be able to will they ever know they'll sell these in store. I wouldn't mind buying one to be fair it looks really cool it, you know it shouldn't matter where you buy your face mask from but you know apple fanboys be apple fanboying so yeah that's the apple face mask designed by the apple design team what else do we have here let's move on oh yeah this is quite funny um do you guys remember that um illegal rave that took place in bristol uh, <laughs> that everyone was losing their minds over on social again i think i've kind of changed my tone somewhat regarding plague raves and stuff like that of that nature i think just considering how shitty some governments have dealt with covid in general and considering the fact that all these raves seem to keep happening regardless of the consequences you know that are at stake right in terms of high high fines um the threat of imprisonment people just keep throwing them anyway which leads me to believe that there's something intrinsic there's something sort of um biological that we need to sort of gather in place you know around strangers is sort of part of our human dna um that just draws us to these things regardless of what's going to happen um so if that's the case then let those people go because you know you and i aren't going um but these people are going to go regardless so if they're going to go and make it safe maybe at least i don't know but regardless this is it bristol illegal rave team claims raves aren't anti-lockdown and they're anti-capitalism obviously the guy who organizes it looks exactly like the person you'd expect would organize a sort of rave and he speaks the same way too um it says yeah a teenager who was fined 200 pound after attending a halloween rave last year claimed raves aren't anti lockdown their anti-capitalism as he left the bristol magistrates court on tuesday february 9th the 18 year old george parsons again press on the media man putting out his full government name like what are you doing attend the illegal rave at a warehouse in yate um, near bristol which attracted 700 people with violence to, uh, breaking out when the police arrived onto the scene one woman's hospitalized after being attacked by a police dog okay see look at them violence erupted but then the person hospitalized was hospitalized because of a police dog typical spin in it um parsons were filmed leaving the court by the bristol post reports of george gority and said the following so this is the kid that obviously attended the rave speak as he just left so um and again this is early in the morning right and look how wired this kid sounds <laughs> and so this is a uh, tweet from connor Go Go connor gogarity Go 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 Go
His tweet reads as follows. Here's a conversation I had with a man who had just been fined over a huge legal rave in Yate. No, me neither. So let's see. Let's play and hear what he has to say. Hey, uh, you all right? Obey. Obey. These guys look wired, right? And it's like, I don't know what time in the morning. It must be like 9, 10, sometime before 12 p.m. And they already look like they've railed maybe a couple of lines of cat, a couple of tabs of acid or whatever else they do, or whatever residue of substances they were on in the previous days. They look like, oh my God. They, they look like the typical person that you would find at one of these sort of illegal warehouse raves somewhere. Even when the, when the world was reopened, there was all these semi um not semi they were kind of these um sort of like pirate promoters that were popping up left right and center using different apps to communicate with each other and they'd set up these warehouse raves in the middle of a factory somewhere they'd be pretty shit environment to go to but just a place to hang out i guess if you're a kid and you don't want to be at home there'll be loads of randoms just stood in corners you know um with balloons and shit drinking you know boxed wine it was like a bit of a shit show situation i went to a couple but you know it's not really my vibe but this is the kind of people you basically find in there do you want to uh, like have a chat? Are you um? Maybe, maybe yeah, well, well, uh, absolutely. Do you have anything yeah. to say about the offence? Um, yeah, raves aren't anti-lockdown; they're anti-capitalism. Uh, and you know the threat of spreading the virus. Uh, beer is a go of control. People. Uh, people are affected by the modern way of life, whether there's raves on or not. So, if someone became seriously ill as a result, um, I've had so many of my friends seriously ill um, through the modern way of life, and so the raves are a way to respect them. What can you say, really, isn't it? That what can you say? That's the kid there. Um, fine two hundred dollars, two hundred pounds. Sorry, I'm not sure where he's gonna be able to put that. You know, I'm not sure he's got probably a tenner on him, let alone two hundred quid. But hey, that's probably a better use of police time, in it. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> These guys are amazing. They're really amazing. <laughs> Oh God, what can you do with these people? What can you do with these people? Oh, <clears throat> and in exclusive news, courtesy of Yahoo, exclusive, exclusive news, Anna Sorkin, the finesse queen herself, right? Um, The lady who was at the center of my friend Anna and the, I think the article from what, the New York Times magazine from a couple of years ago, basically did an expose on this young lady who... Um, essentially uh, finessed the entire um, art ho community in New York to believe that she was the daughter of a very wealthy family from Germany or whatever the hell she was from and she basically finessed them all to believe that she was going to build this massive art gallery come warehouse studio space thing um, got massive amounts of loans from different banks stayed in swanky hotels and just lived a life in it she was around um, what era was that that might have been the Sky Ferreira era. It might have been the um what's his name? Adrian Savrian, whatever his name is. There's that French artist who draws those sort of stickmen, that sort of area. Um the era of Busy P and Ed Banger Records. You remember that kind of early two thousands art ho kind of downtown New York scene when maybe um Dashno and all those guys were still alive, hanging around, you know, um, what's his name? Um, Ryan McGinley. Ryan McGinley, Ryan McGinley, is it Ryan McGinley? Ryan McGinley, it is Ryan McGinley, isn't it? Um, and a few other people are popping up during that scene, like Aaron Bondos, Rec Center, you know, that whole era in time, and she was very much part of that scene and culture. And she, I think she even managed to finagle an internship at Purple Magazine, Olivier Zam, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, she went to prison for, I'm assuming it was a 12 years, maybe it was 12 and it was four, I'm gonna read the article and find out, but she went into prison, um, she during the time in prison she became a bit of a you know cult figure when the article obviously came out and the book came out afterwards she basically left a whole trail full of people that were basically affected by her scams but still it was a finesse um to the maximum you know levels that people kind of saw themselves in because i think everyone sort of knew somebody that in the in their own scene who was kind of an anna sorkin in their own sort of way you know people who basically lied about their educational background maybe fobbed and maybe um 
you know stretch the truth in terms of their educational um and work experience or they've been to pr prior to, to that to kind of get into the industry so kind of people kind of were all right with her and in general i'm a big fan of hers regardless i don't give a shit i think she rocks and of course her court appearances were epic she came in with like you know dior glasses a designer a designer dress was fairly unrepentant when press did reach out to her to communicate via the prisons and then while I was in prison she ended up selling her life story to Netflix um they're filming a series now um da -da -da -da. loads of cool stuff but anyway the the crux of the issue is she's been released from prison this is an article here from Yahoo News it says Anna Sorkin has been released from prison so the following Anna Sorkin is out from prison um New York State Department of Corrections um records say that she's released on Thursday from the Albion Correctional Facility in upstate New York a source familiar with Sorkin's situation confirmed to Insider that she has been released woohoo in May 2019 Sorkin was sentenced to oh it was May 2019 it feels like ages ago doesn't it was sentenced to four to twelve years in prison on charges related to a scheme where she pretended to be a millionaire German heiress named Anna Delvey um to take the money from the banks and her financial situation honestly I reckon recommend there's loads of podcasts about it online i mean yeah what, loads of podcasts you can listen to about the situation there's a few you just kind of type in her name um anna delvey in your podcast app you'll find it but i really recommend you read my friend anna probably one of the best books kind of that document the entire thing a close friend um or a close former friend who um that was with her during most of that journey details her experience um you know um, living in that orbit of Anna Delvey aka Anna Sorkin so definitely check that out and of course once the movie or TV series comes out on Netflix that'll obviously give you that story another bit of a bump but I can't wait to see hopefully she goes on a podcast maybe she goes on Red Scare maybe she goes on Joe Rogan or something I really want to see someone on a podcasting community um, reach out to her for an interview or two but maybe not now because she might get deported and I'm not too sure because she's she, she even an American citizen I'm not too sure if she is but it continues here it says um, her sentence included the time that she spent in jail on Rikers Island ahead of her trial and was shortened for good behavior. Sorokin um, was merit released um, to parole according to Department of Correction Records. Sorokin created a Twitter account um, after her release using the name Anna Delvey. She tweeted the Manhattan District Attorney said good job. Insider reported last month that Sorokin had had had, um, had paid restitution to her victim using the 325, 320,000 she received from Netflix which is producing a limited series about her time as a fake IRS which is going to be you know she's definitely going to come into more money than that of course if she decides to do all the usual press runs so she won't be hurting for that regard she's also appealing to the charges against her despite a release from prison so I can attorney say that the money she owed to banks amounted to a civil dispute um, does not have to rise to a level of crime and it says here it comes clear that her it's, it's clear it clears her name and that's important says Sorokin's attorney Audrey A. Thompson previously told Insider it's in her interest to pursue the appeal because she has her whole identity riding on this as Sorokin is a German citizen she could be deported by US Immigration and Customs Enforcement um, through deportations have been though deportations have been complicated because of the coronavirus pandemic and because of the Biden administration's move to limit them oh she might she might have come out at the perfect time in it and um, she can also look forward to a Netflix series where she'll be played by the Ozark co-star Julia Garner filming resumed this year following a delay um, due to the coronavirus and this is the girl that's going to play her right Julia Garner from Ozark so it's a pretty good um, casting in terms of you know what she looks like and her overall demeanor um, I think that's going to be pretty cool to see that how that kind of pans out but yeah um, great news for Anna Sorkin again I can't wait to hear what she has to say regarding her time in jail what she thinks of the scene overall now that she's come back out the industry how things have changed it'll be really awesome if she decides to use her newfound fame to actually bankroll the gallery that she allegedly was trying to make when she was going around finessing people for money that would be a pretty good way to kind of um end the story source quote unquote um i would love to see that happening and just in general just to kind of get a, a glimpse into her mindset and you know um how she operates why she does what she does will be pretty cool we need to learn more about the lady because a lot's been written about her from people um associated or near to her but it was good to hear those kind of things from the horse's mouth so yeah and the talking is free um free at last free at last what else do we have here let's move on 
Oh, yeah, we got some news on the Star Wars Mandalorian Disney front. Unfortunate news here, if you are Gina Carano. Unfortunate news. So, it appears as if, according to Variety magazine, Lucasfilm UTA dropped Mandalorian star Gina Carano following offensive social media posts. So, if you're familiar, obviously most people are familiar, should be familiar with The Mandalorian. It's a hit breakout star of the Disney Plus platform. Um, an amazing TV series, probably the best film lucasfilm has done um since the well since the prequels right i guess right since the prequels um the sequels people are not really been vibing with in the star wars community there's loads of fan channels on youtube that basically rip them things to pieces and then when you finally do because i think i think that's funny when you watch the when you watch the some of the what are they called um uh, I forgot what the name of it, but what we watch some of these detractor channels on YouTube that basically tear Star Wars and Lucasfilm to pieces um, regarding how they've treated Star Wars as a franchise. You kind of think, you know what, they're going a bit over the top. But then you finally watch those, The Last Jedi, and those other kind of film movies that have come out um, since the originals, and you're like, oh my god, that these movies are legitimately unwatchable, right? They're horrible. They're littered with you know stupid social justice motives and themes um, when. They they do try and include other voices they don't give me enough screen time the plus don't really make any sense they're just really really completely completely terrible movies as you know as they pertain to star wars then the mandalorian comes out um um john favreau leading the charge and just takes it back to its core takes it back to what it is these quick 30 minute western inspired um you know tv series probably series except season one probably better than season two but just expertly done you saw how the fanfare when luke skywalker returns at the end right no spoiler alert because you should have watched it already by now but it's really been a hit hit star hit hit um show out from the gate and of course the cameos from bill burr gina carano in it just really really good characters overall that people are really vibed with and of course you know baby yoda um and the mandalorian of course <clears throat> But there's been a lot of stuff brewing in the background with Gina Carano because I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, when it first launched, it started getting a bit popular. I'm assuming somebody from Disney or Lucasfilm kind of told her or suggested that she kind of put her pronouns in a Twitter pro profile, you know, um, what she basically wants to be referred to or regarded as, it, um, you know, as pertains to her gender or assumed gender, whatever it may be. And she refused to do so because she doesn't necessarily vibe with that sort of thing. And I think ever since then, there's always been a target on her back. And then once the series sort of kind of developed and she started to get a bit more comfortable on social media and started to maybe espouse more conservative quote-unquote views maybe more right-leaning views it was always kind of be over it was always kind of a ticking time bomb as to when she was going to get fired from lucasfilm not if and that's maybe the main issue at point here obviously if it was me i would i'm really a firm believer in operating in the world as is not as you wish it to be so if you want to be part of this amazing franchise there was word of her getting her own spin-off show off the back of the mandalorian i would have just played nice not really you know espouse any of my political views on social media especially on a platform like twitter and just kept it moving and collecting my coins and then once it's over then go on a tear and appear on all the right wing platforms that you want to and do whatever you need to do i just think at the moment considering how the world is and how you know most of the media treat people who have more conservative right-leaning views or centrist views quote-unquote it's always a bit of a minefield in terms to deal with but if you're on social media saying you know all kinds of nonsense so you know re regarding the left side of things everything's completely okay but the moment you say something a bit spicy on the right side of things it gets a bit bad so i do blame gina carano for not kind of understanding her audience and not understanding who she's basically being employed by and then you know deciding to basically ruin her career for what really it doesn't really make any sense on the other side i'm also a believer that you should be able to say what you want to say if 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 the people who espouse more left-leaning politics such as you know um the guy that actually plays the mandalorian he said some very you know inflammatory things mostly based upon you know the kind of liberal side of political thinking if he's allowed to say that then she should be allowed to say the same thing on her side of things it's either everybody can say what they want or no one says anything at all if anything <clears throat> i probably lean more towards just um restricting 
I guess, most Hollywood actors from saying anything in public concerning politics in general, whether it's voting, for to go to vote, do this, whatever. I just think it's cringy. It's not needed. It's unnecessary. Real people in their real lives don't listen to them anyway. Um, I think that's why they should just step aside and let the actual experts speak. Um, but if they are going to be able to speak, every voice should be allowed to say what they want within reason. If they don't, if you can't have this one rule for you, one rule for the other, because that's just not fair. But anyway, let's continue. It says here from Lucasfilm, UTA job Mandalorian side Junior Crano following offensive social media post. It says Junior Crano is not currently employed by Lucasfilm, the company said in a statement on Wednesday. After the controversy erupted over the Mandalorian star social media post, UTA has dropped her as a client. Variety has confirmed, which is effectively cancelling you from the industry. It always happens like this. Whenever somebody gets cancelled, you always get dropped by whatever show you're on and dropped by your agency, which is a way of them kind of showing you that, hey, you're ex community from the industry which again is not productive is not um any way of that person knowing or learning what they should and shouldn't be doing um it's probably not the best thing for somebody's mental health even though some people would argue Gina Crime would probably land on her feet because you know she comes from a fairly wealthy family it's not really important it's not relevant in the situation but still um if anyone thinks cancel culture doesn't exist this is getting cancelled she might still have a career she might have to go on all the right wing um you know uh content platforms to express her views or centrist platform whatever or a political platforms regardless of what they are um she'll be okay in that regard in the immediate but this is what counterculture looks like because she's not going to be able to book another big time show again unless Netflix oh sorry unless Disney Plus re, kind of rehires her the same way they rehired Nick Cannon after he you know espoused his anti-semitic views quote unquote um so if you don't think cancel culture exists this is the prime example that it actually does and this is why it's dangerous because they get to pick and choose who they wanted to get rid of it continues Gina Crimes are currently employed by Lucasfilm and there are no plans for her to be in the future a Lucasfilm spokesperson said in a statement nevertheless her social media posted denigrating people based on their culture and religious identities are abhorrent and unacceptable which of course we need to come back to and highlight because she didn't actually say any of this it continues says Shakarano um, shared several offensive t uh, posts on Instagram stories on Tuesday night including one that likened contemporary political differences to the treatment of Jews in, in of course Yatsi Germany um, Jews were beaten in the streets by not Yatsi soldiers but by their neighbours even by their children kind of on Instagram because history is edited most people today don't realise that um, to get to that point where Yatsi soldiers could easily round up um, the Jews the government for, uh, first had to make their neighbourhoods um, sorry the neighbours hate them simply for being Jews how is that not any different from hating someone for political views the post originated on a different Instagram account so she reshared this on her stories now don't get me wrong do I want one of my co-stars of a leading Disney franchise to say this sort of stuff on their social media platform? No, I don't personally want it. Do I personally care if somebody I watch on TV um, has political beliefs that don't really um, align with myself? No, not really. I don't really give a shit. But the problem I have with this is that if... <clears throat> if people with more left-leaning views can go on their social media account and accuse trump of being a racist and um you know can 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 decry that they nearly got murdered at the capitol building even though they weren't there they can say oh this batshit crazy shit if that's okay then people on the other side of the aisle should be able to say it too because if anybody is under any kind of illusion that there's not many conservatives that kind of work in hollywood they are out of this out of their minds right there's a lot of people who definitely um would lean more right leaning but don't want to say in public because they know it's like an instant instant x mark on your career and junior crown has basically proved it she's a lovable character on the mandalorian extremely popular um you know of course given her ufc fame prior to this anyway regardless and just how much of a bubby personality he is and people seem to like her they think she's attractive bloody blah, blah 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 she's a very popular character so if they think if they're willing and able to get rid of her this basically tells you why more actors and actresses don't come out and say hey i'm a supporter of this person i'm a supporter of that party they won't say it because they know it's going to be a complete death sentence to their career like again like i said i would much prefer my my actors and actresses and people that appear on tv to not say anything political at all on their social media platforms but again it's their social media platforms if they want to say it let them say it um of course the consequences are there but you can't have one rule for one or one for the other and another one it says here in another post corona shared a photo of a person wearing multiple cloth masks of the caption meanwhile in california 
Both posts were gone from Crown's Instagram by mid Wednesday. Other posts, including one which the coroner wrote, Jeff Epstein didn't kill himself, remained the hashtag fire Gina Corona. Um, I don't know why Jeff, this is, Jeff Epstein didn't kill himself is not a uh, why is that a controversial point of view to make? Anybody that's actually read anything concerning his time in prison will know that there are way too many, um, there are way too many dodgy pieces of detail that lay that kind of allow themselves to be open for people to speculate i don't think that's anything wrong to say you know um the fact that he was in this cell with a certain inmate the fact that the security guards both fell asleep there's no real um closed circuit footage of the actual incident prior leading up to it it's all too fishy um I don't see why that's so controversial. Anyway, it says here, uh, the fire Gina Corona hashtag began circulating on Twitter on Wednesday in response to a post. Many users tagged Lucasfilm and corporate parent uh, Disney in their post. Of course, the, 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 the tattletale community come out in force. Corona is no stranger to controversial social media in November. She was criticized for mocking people who specified pronouns when she updated her Twitter bio with beep bop bop, which she later removed in December. <laughs> because that's really funny. In December, Lucasfilm announced Rangers and New Republic, a direct spinner for the Mandalorian that seemed to suggest a path for her character Cara Dune, a former rebel trooper who had become a marshal for the New Republic of the show. Lucasfilm has yet to announce a cast for the new show. However, so she's officially gone. And this is an article here from the Daily Beast detailing her exact court indiscretions. If we scroll down here, um, you obviously got the post of what she said. And again, um, I would personally not prefer my actors and actresses to say anything political on their platforms. But I just think we're in a really dodgy place if we allow one side of the hour to say something and the other side not to say anything. Um, I don't think it serves any real purpose. And again, considering how... Um, you know how well and not well received some of the other star wars franchises are by the actual fan base i think this is probably going to do more damage than bad more good than bad or i'm sorry more bad than good for Star Wars overall i think they've really underestimated the kind of love and affection people seem to have for gina crana and her car doing character in the mandalorian and we definitely haven't heard the last of this going forward but again um Maybe this is part of it, isn't it? Um, when you're in public, when you're in the public light or when you're working in Hollywood, you just have to accept the fact that you're going to be under some um, scrutiny, 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 scrutiny for your personal social media and have to move accordingly. Um, maybe part of this is her just not really giving a shit, which is quite admirable too. But, you know, she did fumble the bag somewhat considering she had a spinoff, um, you know, in the works especially with our character which is essentially money guaranteed for years and maybe decades to come uh, but it's interesting to see what happens going forward with this anyway let's move on what else do we have here oh yeah we have this post here from the new york post um courtesy of the new york post a uh, youtuber david dobrik's new 9.5 million dollar mansion has hawaii punch fountain and again when i first saw this post i was like 9.5 million mansion i saw the mansion so i was like that's pretty cheap for a californian home and then i realized no it's in hawaii <laughs> no it's not in hawaii yeah, i could joke so this is from a uh, new york post it says here um youtuber david dobrik has a brand new 9.5 million house in los angeles with a sweet ha a perk hawaiian punch fountain uh he says yeah, this is my favorite part of the house it's a water fountain like you'd get a school but instead of water check it out uh the 24 year old says in a video as he uh slurps red fruit punch flowing from the fountain his fruit punch is freaking ridiculous the gen z prankster said the idea came from the 2020 2022 adam sandler movie mr deeds about the man who inherits a lavish fortune including a mansion with the hawaiian fruit punch fountain apparently the movie um left an impression so this is his home and again i have to say right this might legitimately legitimately be the nicest um home i've seen from a youtube influencer or anyone on social media in general i think this is really really beautiful so 9.5 million again i still think it's pretty decent in terms of size considering the other places i've seen people buy in la you know the, the la retail prices seems to be ridiculous ridiculous for the amount of square footage you get but i guess the views kind of make up for it but look at that garden a nice pool a lawn outdoors lots of likes and lawn chairs which they seem to love in la they love a good lawn chair outside that you can overlook you know others um take and lie down and see the views he looks flipping gorgeous 
Um, you've got this amazing um, uh, ceiling to roof, I guess, whatever, view out onto the swimming pool that you can view outside on there. Uh, you've got this amazing cinema room too inside, which looks flipping fantastic. A perfect place to kind of chill and relax. Uh, great little dining room again with, a, with another TV with a kind of fireplace thing. I think he showed this on the video. Um, this is a, what's it called? Like a pressure cooled wine cellar with um, fingerprint ID to get in. Great staircase. Like it legitimately might be one of the nicest places I've seen from a YouTuber. Like really nicely done. Like beautiful, beautiful apartment. A oh, beautiful, beautiful home actually, not apartment. But look at that. How gorgeous is this? And again, I'm not really a big fan of his content. Um, I think, you know, his face kind of annoys me. I mean, I've, I've got weird things with faces, but how he smiles, that kind of like, eh, that kind of smile annoys me. The frantic nature of the vlogs in general. The vlog squad is so ridiculous. You know, like, I just, I don't know. I'm just not a fan of the content itself, but you can't deny the hustle. You can't deny that what the hustle can do as well, because, you know, to be able to buy a $9.5 million home is insane. I think he's also setting up his own... Um, podcast or youtube show called views i think coming up soon as well first guess is hail halsey which is kind of sh coming straight out of the park with something amazing so yeah big up to david dobrik in it absolutely smashed it man absolutely smashed it let's move on from that one what else we have here du, 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 du. oh yeah we got this we got an article here from the verge it says Salesforce declares that nine to five, the nine to five workday is dead and will let some employees work from home from now on. Um, this is obviously a big uh, deal because Salesforce employs a lot of people. So the fact that they're deciding um, or that they've taken taken this decision um, to allow some of their or most of their workforce to work from home is definitely a step in the right direction and definitely kind of signals a change for maybe forever. Um, I'm a big believer in either there's going to be two reactions post covid either things have changed forever in terms of you know people where people decide to live how they interact with their city whether or not they go to work you know how where they take their, their kids to school how they vacation blah 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 or it will just yeah either that things will change or it will just go back to complete normal that i don't feel it'll be in the middle um i kind of lean towards the side of like things have changed for good i think we've kind of not really seen it because we haven't been able to live our lives but once the world does start to reopen we'll start to notice a lot of the people that we knew or people in general have moved away especially if you lived in a very populated city like i do in london you see a lot of people with wow oh, it's quite it's a lot more you know emptier on your commute to work you'll definitely be able to notice that you'll definitely see a lot of the buildings that were full of people in offices will be gone of course places like we work have suffered a lot during um the lockdowns and stuff so it's definitely going to be a bit of a change um retail you know high street loads of brands have gone under during this time so it'll definitely be a bit of a change but again i'm not too sure if it's just going to be back to normal straight away or some level of change but this is definitely indicative of a mind shift for some companies because i remember even when i was working in a normal corporate world um it was a big deal to be allowed to work from home it was a privilege that was only you know um given to people who maybe you know had met their deadlines or shown progress in their work whatever it may be but it wasn't something that was kind of a given you had to kind of ask permission to get it same you were doing a holiday and it was something that people kind of really cherished right which you, you know you should do if you're being allowed to work from home don't get me wrong but then as kind of the years progressed and you know more companies started to realize that you kind of limit your um, talent pool that you can attract from or that you can choose from if you're just letting people only um, kind of come in for, to the office and if you open up again you get that of course there's a risk because you don't know who you're going to get in terms of the control and all this sort of overseeing their work but at this level especially well, at this level at certain levels of work um, it's a given that you're going to get good level candidates that are tests and trials that you can kind of put into place to ensure that they know and they're competent in what they do and then from then on there really shouldn't be that much difference between it and also you have to assume all this time we've been living in lockdown there's been a lot of time to gather loads of um loads of insights into what works and what doesn't work when it comes to working from home um loads of learnings that can be implemented you know uh, you know on the larger scale as you kind of grow your company over the next few months and years going forward but it's the article here from the verge says salesforce declares nine to five work dead and will let some employees work working from home now says the following um cloud computing company salesforce is joining other silicon valley 
Yes. Can you see that? Yep, I think so, right? Yeah, cool. So, um, he's joining other Silicon Valley giants in announcing a substantial shift in how it allows its employees to work. In a blog post published on Tuesday, the company says a 9 to 5 workday is dead and it will allow its employees to choose one of three categories that dictate how often, if ever, they return to the office. Salesforce will also give employees more freedom to choose. Um, what their daily schedules look like. The company joins the other tech firms such as Facebook and Microsoft that have announced a permanent work from home policy in response to the pandemic. It says the following, as we enter the new year, we must continue to go forward with agility, creativity and beginner's mind. And that includes how we cultivate our culture an immersive workforce so an immersive workplace is no longer limited to a desk in our towers the 9 to 5 workday is dead and the employee experience is about more than the ping pong tables and snacks thank god that was you remember that was a big deal right that was such a big deal for some startups you go there and they'll tell you about the drinks on fridays and all this sort of stuff which obviously is going to be a bit of a loss i think for company culture overall there is something beneficial as corny and cringy as they are those sort of like friday drinks and friday kind of hands um hand downs times hand hand stand ups whatever they are stand ups hand down whatever those things are stand ups stand ups i think they call stand ups right um debriefs whatever right company wide things that you do in startups they're pretty important they're pretty vital in terms of um boosting morale you know um encouraging relationships cross platform or cross you know department collaborations which are overly you know um overrated and at risk in that regard you know the kind of oh we have an open office space that means you can collaborate with people over marketing no you don't marketing don't want to talk to you they got work to do you're busy doing your work too it's annoying talking to people as this working on their desk book a meeting and go over your plans but don't come over to my table and speak rubbish to me um but yeah th there's going to be some losses obviously with that sort of country culture stuff but i think overall it's going to be a net positive it continues it says in our always on always connected world it no longer makes sense to expect employees to work at an eight hour shift to do their jobs successfully whether you have a global team to manage the time zones a project-based role that is based here or slower depending on the season or simply have the balance personnel and professional obligation throughout the day workers need flexibility to be successful now i'm not too sure what they mean by this do they mean they're going to allow people to have like open days where you can just work if you get your work done in two hours you're basically done i'm not really a fan of that i kind of like working like you know the times that i need to work nine to five nine to six nine to eight whatever and if you need to work longer you work um i don't like this idea that you know some do three some do two i don't think that's going to be a good thing for overall company um culture and you know sentiment of other people when you learn oh he or she only only was online for a couple of hours that's probably not a great way to go about things but who knows maybe i'm missing something it says here hide the sites uh, picking up young kids from school or caring for sick family members as reasons why employees should not be expected to report to work on a strict eight hour shift every day he also points out um points to how the removal of the strict on office requirements will allow salesforce to expand its recruitment of new employees beyond expensive cities like san francisco and new york which is amazing right it allows people from like rural um communities places that or maybe places you just don't want to move from because that's the thing too people have definitely seen that you know all that shines isn't it, all that glitters isn't shiny so living in la as great as it is isn't the best especially if you're running a, if you're in a democratic state where they you know just the mere sight of somebody without a mask is punishable by death so maybe living in the place where it's a little bit more free you can move around a bit more you can do what needs to be done you can raise a family buy a home and then still work for a company that's paying you a pretty decent wage right it looks good in the cv just doing it remotely is pretty decent it continues in the blog spot Haider defines the three different categories of work as flex, fully remote and office based. Flex would mean coming into the office one to two, three days per week, which I'd probably like, and typically on team collaboration, customer meeting and presentation. And Salesforce expects most of its employees to fall into this category, which I think is pretty decent. I think if you got the ability to go into the office two to three days per week, that would be beneficial, like highly, or maybe, let's say one to three, as they pointed out, because then you could just kind of um you could provide your colleagues with a schedule as well as to when you will be in because that's quite nice if somebody else is you know if you want to have those face-to-face -face meetings and you tell your colleagues hey i'm always in from monday wednesdays and fridays um you know that will allow people to kind of you know be able to time and spec out their team meetings with you and all that sort of good stuff and also allow you, allow you to meet and collaborate with people in your office because i still think it's going to be allowed that's the only thing that i'm skeptical of i think 
the time that people spend indoors they've either decided or they've either kind of fallen in love with where they live and they don't mind working from home or they realize that where they work where they live they don't want to work so there might be that idea where when things reopen you might be like you know what i actually don't mind going to the office because it gives me a break from have being indoors all day so that might be another thing to kind of keep in mind um it continues uh fully remote is what it looks like this is what it sounds like sorry never coming to the office expect perhaps for very rare occasions or work related events office based employees will be the smallest population of workforce um Haida says and the constituent employees um whose roles require them to be in the office four to five days per week our employees are the architects of the strategy and flexibility will be the key going forward Haida writes it's our responsibility as employees as employers to empower our people to get the job done during the schedules that work best for them and their teams and provide flexible options to help make them even more productive so yeah if salesforce can do it then your shitty little startup can do it to give your employees a break let them work from home go from there what else is gonna do from here <laughs> bu, 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 bu. Oh yeah, this is one. Yeah, oh yeah. Talking about tattletales. Um, over the weekend, or over the last weekend, or, yeah, over the last weekend, over the last week, um, there was a bit of a social media kerfuffle cons um, concerning Taylor Lorenz and the clubhouse, and especially and specifically Mark Andreessen from Andreessen Horowitz. Um, she seems to have a bit of a bee in her bonnet for these people in general. Um, if you're not familiar, Taylor Lorenz, who is pictured here on the left, is a technology social media um, a Pacific journalist for the New York Times. She kind of covers a lot of the TikTok people, a lot of the stuff regarding the content houses and, you know, social media platforms in general. And then, of course, Mark Andreessen, you know, the uh, name we speak for itself, from Andreessen Horowitz, um, are heavily involved in Clubhouse. And I guess since last year, Clubhouse has especially been used more specifically mostly by vcs and people that work in you know tech and startups and i guess um if you're taylor lorenz and you're writing about these people and you're writing hit pieces and tech tech down pieces about them you obviously want to get in on the party too but because mark andreessen has a very strict um blocking policy when it comes to journalists or any sort of detractors to kind of limit the amount of bad inputs that he's receiving on twitter he's very quick to kind of block somebody when they say something even if it's like said in joke or in jest or in sarcasm um he ended up obviously blocking taylor Lorenz during this process too which then uh, didn't allow her to join some of the clubhouse rooms and because of that she just cried a foul and then basically made it her mission to tear him down at any you know any occasion she picked probably the worst example to do so i guess they were speaking in a clubhouse room regarding the whole wall street bet subreddit on sub already regarding the stuff with gamestop and how these um day traders um communicate with each other on the reddit and they refer to each other as retards or the way how they act as retarded and all this autism talk which if you're familiar with wall street bets you just have to go on the subreddit for like 10 minutes and you'll get the lingo and understand why these things are basically said someone said it in the chat room it wasn't even the mark andreessen it was like another lady and then um Taylor Renz decided to take that and go on twitter and essentially accuse him of using the r word um, which you can see here on the screen, uh, P Mark Marker, which is Mark Andreessen, just openly using the Arsenal and Clubhouse and that, and not one other person in the room called him on it or saying anything. And of course, he didn't say it. She promptly deleted that tweet because then it was proven that she was incorrect, and she kind of begrudgingly put her tail between her legs and decided to kind of semi apologize, but not really. And um, it's a shame, really. Like I said, it's a shame. I think as much as as annoying as taylor lorenz is she is pretty good in terms of covering all of that tiktok social media content house stuff that exists out there she probably isn't the best when it comes to objectively profiling some of these vcs and tech bros because they probably um don't share her political viewpoint or ideology whatever it may be we shouldn't really matter if you're a journalist but the issue is more so is that she purposely went out to look for in, um, uh, incriminating information or evidence that will tear down someone like a Mark Andreessen and maybe lead to some 
really big sweeping changes on Clubhouse, a platform that she kind of isn't a fan of, right? Or more so the people that are more popular on it, she's not a fan of it. And then um, Glenn Greenwood wore this, writ this amazing scathing piece on it uh, called The Journalistic Telltale and Censorship Industry Suffers Several Well-Deserved Blows. It says that the New York Times Teller Ends falsely accused the tech investor of using a slur after spending months trying to infiltrate and monitor the new app that allows free conservatives conversation. If you're familiar with Glenn Greenwood's work, you'll know that he doesn't pull no punches and he absolutely ev eviscerates her in this profile and it's very well warranted. Um, I'm going to put it up here where it starts. It says here, where we go. Da, 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 da. Um, where do we go here? Where, yeah, that's it. There we go. Um, it starts from here. Um, the, the, the profound pathology driving all of this um, were in full display on Saturday night as a result of the reckless and self um, humiliating smear campaign by one of the New York Times star tech reporters, Taylor Lorenz. She falsely and very publicly accused Silicon Valley entrepreneur and investor Mark Andreessen of having used the slur word retarded during a discussion um, about the Reddit slash GameStop uprising. Lorenz lied. Andreessen never used the word and rather than apologize or retract it, she justifies her mistake by claiming it was a male voice that sounded like his then locked her twitter account as though she rather than the person she falsely mined was the victim and that, i guess was the most annoying part of it right i think these people do exist i think um i've said it many times so many times before but i still remember when this happened right when nelly bowles writ this and um, really hurtful and damaging profile of jordan peterson jordan peterson the custodian of the patriarch for the new york times um nelly bowles who is famously the girlfriend of uh uh, Barry Weiss and she basically was one of the people that led um, this she was kind of I'm gonna say in my opinion she was definitely responsible or one of people responsible t for his breakdown sometime what in the late 2019s um, and this article was the one that basically spawns a phrase enforced monogamy which he basically used in the anthropological sense and she basically took the enforced monogamy thing and obviously made it a big deal and made it seem like he was advocating for you know women to be shackled to men who weren't fit to be their partners or some bullshit but essentially what he was saying was that we should be living in a force in a society where um, monogamy and being in a kind of you know healthy relationship Relationship should be promoted in order to have balanced and stable men in our society because the more unbalanced men are the more dangerous it is for anybody else that isn't a man cool you know pretty simple point of view to have but she purposely sort of spun that and made it into something that it wasn't a hit piece out on him and she, she did the same thing too she read something scathing the community and people that read it were kind of pulling her up on the fact and basically and i think even jordan peterson said at the time i think that was with he when he was touring around with dave rubin he was like oh um dave rubin sorry she went on tour with them or she went to one of their shows she was very friendly she kind of basically had a good rapport with them and then the moment she went back to the office and read up the report she completely ripped them all to pieces which you know was pretty pretty um unscrupulous and really disgusting of the girl um in, in comparison when you consider um you know how much of a good dude jordan peterson is in general so that isn't again that's this isn't surprising but it's just the fact that they go fishing for this stuff is uh, you wouldn't mind seeing that these people go after people that actually deserve to get toned down or deserve or deserve to have a little bit more scrutiny being placed upon what they do but instead they go and look for people who are kind of gaining um momentum who are obviously uh, speaking for a certain group of people who have maybe maybe found a niche that they've kind of been able to exploit and they just get jealous it feels like of the limelight and they want to do whatever they can to kind of dim that light in some way shape or form uh, i remember that and that kind of reminds me a lot of this taylor lorenz thing so let's go back to the glenn greenwood article it says the following it says but the details of what happened here are revealing the discussion that lorenz falsely described took place on a relatively new audio app called clubhouse an invitation only platform in intended to allow for private free range and group conversation it has become popular among silicon valley executives and various media personalities out oh, but by cnbc note last week as the app has grown people have become more diverse as backgrounds have begun to join and it has carved a niche among the black users uh, who have innovated the use of using it um, these private chats have often infiltrated by journalists sometimes by uh, by invitation other times by deceit these journalists attempt to monitor the discussions then publish summaries often the reporting consists quote unquote in reporting out of context statements designed to make the participants look bigoted insensitive um otherwise um uh, bad behavior sorry um otherwise 
otherwise guilty of bad behavior in other words journalists um, desperate for content have flagged clubhouse as a new frontier for their slimy work as voluntary home monitors and speech please which is the weird thing right you'd always assume well, journalists would be doing investigative work right tearing down institutions um exposing corruptions all this sort of stuff but instead they're just going around essentially trying to find out what boss or what startup founder shouts at their employees in the morning um which person's you know fucked so and so like it's all really horrible gossip maggie kind of content and it's nothing that's actually going to move the needle or change things in any kind of meaningful way for feeling her um, igno um ignoble duties lorenz announced on twitter that andreessen's bad andreessen has said a bad word during the discussion um the red revolution she claimed she used a, a retarded word she then upped her tattling her tattling game by not including this allegation but also the names and the photos of those who were in the room at the time which is again unscrupulous um it continues here um numerous clubhouse participants including camille fossa immediately documented that lorenz had lied the moderator of the discussion nate jones said that demarco jason never used the word what actually happened was that felicia horowitz a different participant in the discussion had explained the redditors called themselves retard revolution and that it was only a mention of that word rather than apologizing or retracting terrorism did what she most people do in this case when they are found wanting and instead of just apologizing and moving on and profusely apologizing and saying i'm sorry she said the following thanks for clarifying that it was felicia that said that word rather than mark as many in the room heard it i hope you can understand how some people in that room felt hearing it oh god this woman man um beside the fact that the new york times reported records you tried to destroy someone's reputation what is wrong with this episode everything and i think the last bit is really scathing what is the last paragraph it says i think here uh yeah um this is it right um but but this is now the prevailing ethos of the corporate journalism they they have insufficient talent or skill even less desire to take on real power centers the military industrial complex the cia and the fbi the clandestine security state wall street silicon valley monopolies the corrupted and lying corporate media outlets they serve so settling on this penny ante trivial bullshit tattletailing home monitoring speech policing all in some all in the most anti-intellectual adolescent primitive way is all they have it's all they are and it's why they have fully earned the contempt and the disrupts which the public holds them ouch right absolutely destroyed but again um it's more than warranted man it's really really ridiculous um case um i'd much rather my journalists actually stick to reporting on things that actually matter instead of monitoring speech on clubhouse the last thing you want for clubhouse is to turn into another twitter that's why people are on there because it's a little bit reckless a little bit loose you can't get away with saying some more racy things um people can't really police your speech for the most part on an app such like clubhouse i'm sure they're gonna implement some moderation tools later on down the line that are gonna you know um, curtail some things but overall um again i've not really used it too tough i'm not gonna say i'm the champion of the app itself but let people speak let people speak that's what i say in general what else we have to say here don't talk about that we don't want to talk about that we've already spoken about it i think that might be it you know in terms of where we are from now on think that might be yeah that, that might be it. let's leave it there for now that's it let's leave it there for now um we've spoken about quite a few things already as per usual this is the excellent zinger show episode number 432 if it's your first time checking out the show please make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe and leave a comment down below that'd be greatly appreciated if it's your first time checking out the show please do so second time do so again just to make sure if you listen via the podcast app of course make sure you share it and all that good stuff so people know where to come to get the content of course and support for your patrons always most are welcome bonus shows are coming at the end of the week so definitely make sure you tune in and get involved there at patreon.com for just agostino patreon.com for just a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o get involved on there don't delay today and i'll see you guys again very very soon take care be safe peace